We then won this uh, brand new award at ISPO, Winter ISPO in 2017 for having an innovative concept and we won the category of At Leisure. Yeah, Klaus. Um, hi, good morning. Hi, Martin. Um, we are here at Brady's. Yeah. That's your company, if I'm not mistaken. No, you're um, right, yes. Why did you found Brady's? What's um, your <laughs> reasoning behind it? Uh, well, that's a funny story, actually. Um, I've been in, in this industry for quite a long time, for 30 years. Um, and I've been in functional wear all the time, producing ski wear for ski schools and also uh, jackets for policemen for army, for Red Cross and things like that. And actually my wife and me, we were on a hike and I was wearing uh, such a outdoor pant that you know, with bags and zippers yeah. on it. And my wife, she was wearing a pair of blue jeans and I was asking her, why are you wearing a pair of blue jeans? And she said, because we want to go out afterwards and I don't want to look like you. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the simple reason. I didn't understand why she doesn't want to have functional pants. And she didn't understand why it looked like like that, and and that that was the initiative idea that we had uh, to create our brand Bradys. So you are trying to to create functional clothing that's fit, fitting for the urban area. Yeah, the easy idea, the idea, easy idea that we follow is the following: yeah? we we use functional material. Uh, that we source very sustainably. That's another story that I'm going to tell you uh, afterwards. But we use functional material and we have, uh, we have our fits, we have our patterns, we have our pants that you can wear every day. You know, what, whatever, whatever the day brings, whatever, whatever you do. Uh, if, 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 you, if you are in the office, uh, you, you use your bike uh, uh, to, to go there or your e-bike or your longboard. Uh, we are all active people nowadays in the city and now with Bradys you can wear perfect pants that guide you through the, this activity and gives you a good feeling the whole day long. Yeah, I guess the, the, um, the movement goes towards that we are um, always interactive in transitional spaces. We are not always in one place and we have to, to go from one place to another and there we are always open to the elements. So yeah. Also if you think about people that travel a lot, yeah, they, they sit in cars, they sit in planes, they sit in trains, they move a lot and uh, they absolutely appreciate the possibility of wearing a functional and very stylish uh, hand now and that's that's the reason of our success. Yeah, I guess that's the, the movement the whole fashion industry is going towards now. And I guess this is the future of yeah. functional fashion. Yeah, honestly spoken, we don't see too many. We don't see too many uh, companies moving into mm -hmm. that uh, direction. Uh, of course, we are here at Outdoor by Ispo in Munich, and uh, of course, you can see here quite a lot of companies that are uh, trying to think about the future in 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 our garment, in our clothing. Actually, the the. The big portion of the fashion industry is still in fast fashion and we are trying to, to work against that first because we, we implement function in, in our pants but secondly mainly because we have a very very sustainable supply chain that is based 100% uh, in Europe. Uh, and that makes a huge difference. Please tell me about your sustainability afterwards yeah, or okay. in, in yeah, the okay, later okay, stage okay, of the okay, interview. Okay. Um, I first want to know which functions do you have implemented? Ah, in you, can, you, you can see it over there. Uh, it's water resistance, it's breathable, it's um, quick drying, which is very, very good if you're traveling. Uh, you, you have to wash uh, the pants. It's uh, breathable. Uh, which uh, helps you a lot on hot days uh, like like today when uh, you have more than 35 uh, degrees outside. Celsius. And then you have and and then uh, you have something that we call um, climate resistance. So it warms you in winter and it cools you in summer, which is perfect. You only need one pair of pants that you can wear in summer and in winter time. How does that function? Uh, well, as we as we use the, the the latest technology of functional material. Uh, that is based uh, on, on a sustainable and bio-based product uh, uh, based in castor oil. Once you will wear it, you will love it. That's, that's really incredible how, how, that, how that works. 
and what material is that specifically? I'm I'm really interested in yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah, know yeah. that we talked about, <laughs> we talked about uh, that earlier, and you're really, really an expert. Um, that is a that is a functional material, uh, a bio-based functional material, and the source, the natural source of that material, is castor oil. Castor oil. And the big big benefit of castor oil, if you compare it with other with other natural sources like cotton, is that it grows on very very dry land so you don't need that much water that you need uh, for cotton you don't need pesticides and that gives you a very very good feeling and the functionality is perfect it's really it's really great i have to research that later because yeah. i don't I'm, I'm not an expert in castor oil <laughs> <laughs> and in your polymer and yeah, yeah i will try to, to get some more information about that and also to the viewer afterwards. I can, I can help you um, with that. Yeah. yeah, how does yeah. the sustainability aspect work? What's uh, well, uh, when the first idea except the, the, from the part that you are using much less water than for example for except that those the, cotton shirts those we got on the ESPO fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, the first aspect is we, we have a supply chain that is 100% in Europe. So coming from the fiber uh, that uh, is Italian. You are sitting in, in Switzerland? No, no, we are no, Austrian. Austrian. Austrian, okay, Vienna, Austrian. Austria. Um, so we have a product that we really source 100% uh, in Europe. The fiber is from Italy. The fabric comes from Sweden. The accessories uh, come from Germany and the production is done in uh, the city of Senica in Bosnia which is just five hours driving away from our hometown. And so uh, we, we have an European mindset in the supply chain and that mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. If you, if you are in, in that fashion industry and you see what is going on worldwide in the fashion industry, it gives you a good feeling if you, if you know the people producing your product and if, and if you know that the people producing your product are having the same mindset. Um, the example that I used to tell is if you go to Sweden, talk to our fabric supplier and you just have to look at nature and you understand how they understand the aspects of uh, sustainability and nature. Um, I, I would say Swedish people are ahead Austrian people in, in those kind of thinking and that's important because products come out of a specific mindset and that is, uh, that is, the, that is the, the idea that we follow in terms of sustainability. Yeah, I guess that's an important point, having, having the right mindset and then, yeah, doing all your decisions, either clothing or in other parts of your life for sustainability and... The next aspect is that we are not in fast fashion, you know, fast fashion um, is... Um, fast fashion led to the fact that within the last 15 years uh, the number of garments produced on this planet doubled, while in the, in the same period of time the number of people on this planet just rose by 18%. In the same time, the time uh, that we use a, a garment halved. Uh, there is there is the the idea of circularity uh, that is coming uh, very very strongly. And the first aspect of circularity is don't bring it to the market if you cannot take it back. Our idea is we don't want to bring it to the market if we cannot sell it. In the meaning of uh, the products that we that we make are products that you would wear for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. So the colors that you see here are colors that don't change too quickly. I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing a pair of uh, khaki pants. Um, yeah, khaki is very uh, UV resistant mostly. Not only that, but it, it doesn't change. Yeah. It doesn't change. Uh, or do you mean that that the fashion aspect? Uh, the that fashion the aspect is not out of fashion any in any three time years soon. from now. In three years from yeah. now, the same goes for colors like night sky or yeah. or black. Uh, yeah, you have black, you have red. That are colors that are worn every time, every exactly every so that, season, that every year. That leads to the fact that the product that that we make is worn for a pretty long time, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we are. We have started already um, selling also pre-loved products because once 
people give it away, we have to think about it, what happens next. And uh, this is something that we already started uh, to establish a concept of selling pre-loved Redis. And when, when pants come to their end of their lifetime, then in the moment the best practice aspect in circularity is to um, is to upcycle it, make uh, bags and other things yeah. out of it, which we also started already. We yeah. are a young company. We just started. How old are you? We just started two and a half years ago in December 2016. We then won this uh, brand new award at ISPO, Winter ISPO in 2017. For which aspect? Uh, uh, for being you know, in innovative, for having an innovative concept. And we won the category of at leisure. So at leisure, at leisure yes. is one of these one of these vocabulary one of these words. Yeah, one of the, the words you have you have checkwear, you have her functional clothing in urban spaces. Exactly. Yeah, here at leisure, yeah. At least my viewers are completely aware of all these terms. Of so, all these terms. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. mean the the, the um the definition of tech wear or functional clothing in outdoors in, in, in uh, urban use cases is very wide. You have uh, from from uh, people who are just loving the looks of it, and uh, uh, up to people that are uh, just um, using functional wear and are not concentrated on the looks. And you combine both. Yeah, exactly, apparently, exactly, exactly. That's what we do. Yes. Uh, what we also won, we won another award, the Trigos Award. It is an, it's an Austrian award for sustainable projects. And we won the Newcomer Award in 2017. And this was so, some, somehow the starting point when we started it all. Um, gave us um, strong support in the beginning. Because that, that is something that you need uh, if, if you start up something like we did it. Yeah. Um, how did you start? Did you start fully with a... With a with the whole range of pants or did you develop uh, slowly into well actually um, actually we started with quite a number of pants because our idea was uh, to ha to have as as few different styles as possible uh, to serve like 80 90 percent of people and we started i think when we started we had four styles for men and four styles for women now we have like uh, six for women, six for men. Um, but what we did in the beginning, we opened very quickly a store in the city of Mödlings, south of Vienna. And we found out with those first 1000 customers that we had in that store, uh, that we had to improve patterns, that we had to improve the fittings, because the fitting of a pant is a very, very important thing. You would I never, agree with you totally. You would never wear the product that you are wearing if you don't love or like the fit. Yeah. And this was our starting point, to really try to have an excellent uh, product from the beginning. And I think this was one of the reasons why, why, we, why we were so successful from the beginning. So you have a, a, a range of movement in your pants that's uh, not only for just sitting in the office, but also for climbing or for other activities. Exactly. If I understand so, this correctly. so exactly what we say is whatever the day brings, you would uh, fit perfectly. Uh, the, the pant would fit perfectly for whatever acti activity uh, that that you do. As you mentioned, climbing. Um, me, I'm using my e-bike to go to the office. I, just put on my braids and that's quite perfect. Um, how wide is the range of, uh, of sizes that you have, have available? Wow! Do you uh, have <laughs> just the standard sizes or do no, you have no, no, longer no. pants no, and, no. and shorter we have sizes? All the sizes? We have all the sizes needed on the market of course. You know 80% of the sales are done in I don't know uh, eight sizes in total and then uh, you need another I don't know how many sizes it, they are 50 60 so we have short and long uh, pants and we have uh, starting from men's size uh, in German sizes 44 to men's size 60 and women's sizes starting from 32 which is pretty small to 44 um, so there's there are quite a lot of uh, sizes available and 
the perfect fit in each of those sizes is very important and we can guarantee that. Yeah, I mean, and obviously everybody is different, but if then minor changes are necessary, everybody can tailor, uh, That's can, can change, exactly. change his pants. Exactly. And, um, exactly. I mean, the pants I wear are also <laughs> a little bit changed by me. So yeah. what was your greatest hurdle you had to overcome oh, when you were uh, <laughs> developing the brand or developing the pants? Um, I mean, there's obviously always something interesting to learn from these experiences. Do you have anything to share or what you want to, to, uh, to say well, about these topics? Well, well, the greatest hurdle in the moment, um, we, didn't have, we didn't have big hurdles in developing a pant because for me coming, my father was already a tailor, my father was already a pant maker. So I was, was in the a, industry. Was he a tailor in the, in, in the, in the more mass market industry or was he a, a, a bespoke or made to measure tailor? Well, well, back in the 70s, we are talking about the 70s yeah, in the city okay. of Vienna, there it was, was bespoke, no, yeah. it was bespoke, yes. And, it, and, 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 and due to that, due to that, um, I, I, I'm really into that fitting theme from, uh, from my father's side already. And my father was uh, also the person to decide to not only do bespoke bands, but then go into sports uh, because he was, uh, he, he and my, my mother, they were enthusiastic in skiing. Uh, and they did um, ski wear and ski pants, the famous Chetose. Mm, in, 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 I don't know this, but I'm not uh, very, um, involved in ski skiing Not so very involved in skiing <laughs> uh, but coming back to your question of hurdles um, mm -hmm. it was not too difficult to create a product for me that was quite simple uh, what is yeah you what obviously is, had a lot of experience you know what topic. is difficult is to follow the next step because our idea is to to come back with with production to the places where we sell it and, and we have to face that the technology available in the moment for production of of garments uh, is a technology that um, has not developed a lot within the last 40 years because you know what happened in the last 40 years the industry the textile and garment industry was moving into far east and was trying to find cheaper production places mm -hmm. uh, and the, the technology did not um, did not improve a lot so that we are not able in the moment to sell a product at the same price that uh, our product is sold now if we would if we would produce it here in the city of munich for instance and uh, this is one of the big hurdles that we are facing right now because our idea is to get closer with all this supply chain to come to a circularity aspect because circularity will never be yeah. possible if you have to send out all the pro products all over the world yeah. um, before you redo or reuse it. Yeah, so you are thinking globally but acting lo locally, like yeah. Richard Buckminster Fuller had said <laughs> it back then. Well, I'm, I'm, we are really trying to, to make this fashion industry a little bit better. We are really trying to make something better. And, and there we see the biggest hurdles. If, if you ask about hurdles in the development of a young company, mm -hmm. uh, th then uh, I can tell you a lot because it's, it's, it's still not easy yeah. uh, to develop a company, but the product itself for us was not too, was not yeah. too difficult. So you had not too, difficult. too many problems with the product itself. That was pretty easy for you. And then bringing it in on the market, producing it, uh, finding the right suppliers, that but, was the biggest hurdle exactly, for you. Exactly, but we spent quite a lot of time, even with our uh, experience, uh, we spent quite a lot of time uh, in searching for new technologies, for new aspects, uh, uh, for new materials, uh, trying to improve uh, our, our materials that we use together with our suppliers. So that is, is quite time consuming in our daily work. Do you have... Um how do I call it? Wishes for the future, which technology should appear or, or how should the current technology change to make 
Well, which is very good as I, as I said, uh, functionality. There, there, there will be. There are many aspects that need to be improved. We talked about uh, water repellency, about mm -hmm. the, uh, about the um, development in the last 30 years, about the thoughts of the day. Uh, there is lots, lots of space for improvement, and I do have many wishes. But you know, one thing is to have wishes, and the other thing is to really actively. Uh, work on the improvement of things and that's one of the reasons why we decided to go for one product pants and we can concentrate on that product to really improve it every day mm -hmm. that's our goal yeah thanks uh, that that sounds reasonable I mean better do it once and well than do it exactly. twice and not very exactly. well exactly that's our idea that's our um, yeah, do you have any clothing, closing, <laughs> either clothing or closing uh, thoughts um, that you want to share? With uh, well, the community? first of all, first of all, I want to say thank you, Martin, for coming here. It was very, very interesting talking to you. I, I can tell uh, you all out there, Martin is uh, an expert. He knows what he's uh, doing. He knows. Uh, uh, many aspects uh, of the fashion industry and I would really love to stay in contact with you Martin <laughs> and, to see, and to see how we can um, how we can uh, um, participate in making the world of fashion industry a little bit better I think that's a good closing call thank you thank very you much, very Martin. much thank you for being here